G'day and welcome this Good Friday morning. I hope it's been a good day for you. I've had a wonderful morning. I had a magnificent hot cross bun with butter dripping down the side. It was fantastic. But it's not good just for that, of course. It's a good day because today we remember uh, that Jesus was crucified for us. He was crucified for me. He was crucified for you, for those who put their trust in Jesus. And because of that, we're going to remember that good news today. We're going to revisit those passages that are helpful for us. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into it. And then we're going to hear a message uh, a little bit later. So let me pray uh, before we read our passage and then listen to the message. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of the gospel that it is good news for us. We thank you for this day, for Easter, and that it's celebrated all around the world. And we pray that people would realise its true meaning, its profound meaning for them. And we pray, dear Father, that you would be proclaimed and exalted and glorified, and that you would be glorified in all that we think, all that we say, and all that we do this day. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also he heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone, let's see Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Is God interested and involved in the world? Uh, does he care for the world and for us? What is God like? You know, these are among the, the questions many people are asking at this time. Now, to, to some folk, God is a hoax. Uh, for others, God is an idea, a mathematical puzzle that keeps the universe together. 
Uh, physicist Leon Letterman built this extraordinary machine underground in Switzerland that's famously known as the Higgs boson. Uh, its purpose is to discover the God particle, to recreate that first spark that began the universe at the very beginning. Uh, we do wonder though, don't we? Has there ever been a person, in fact, who hasn't, who hasn't asked a question? What is God like? Well, the Bible tells us there are signs all around us that point to something of what God is like. You know, gaze into the enormity of the universe and, and look at the stars at night or, or study the, the, the tiny little particles under a microscope. And in all those things, we see God's creative power. Psalm 19 says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, the sky proclaims the work of His hands. But more than anything else, the Easter event shows us God and what God is like. The universe doesn't contain God, but it spells out that there must be a God who has made it all. But for a few minutes, though, what I want to draw our attention to is one verse in the Bible, a well-known verse, John chapter 3, verse 16. And from this verse, I'm going to raise three things that we can learn about God and discover about God. And then finally, I want to draw our attention to how we might respond. But let me read this verse from the Bible for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The three things that we learn about God in this verse are, one, God is personal, two, God is present, and three, God is is powerful. First of all, God is personal. We're told, for God so loved. So God is not an impersonal force or an abstract idea. No, He is personal because He loves. He has, we're told, affection for the world. He has a love that is directed toward a specific object, namely the world. The Bible declares God is love. He is always loving from all eternity. The one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, have always enjoyed perfect love for each other. And here we hear, God loved the world. Now, the wind doesn't love. Gravity doesn't have a personality. But God so loved. He is personal. And second, God is present, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. And then in verse 17 we read, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So God didn't come into existence because we made him. No, it's not like uh, we, we didn't give him a spark through someone's imagination. We No, we owe our existence to him. He is the creator. He is the one who has made everything. And, and as John 3.16 tells us, God is not distant. No, He has been acting in the most important of ways and personal of ways. It's as though the painter has entered his own masterwork or the, the composer has entered his music. God in His Son came into the world. And notice the word for love here. It has the D at the end. It is loved. And that means we're talking about a specific expression of God's love. Again, God sent His only Son, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He became a man. He lived in this world, fully man, human. He experienced the, the breadth of human experiences, happiness and sadness, energy and exhaustion, suffering and poverty and loneliness. And at Easter, God's presence, though, is seen in the world in the most personal and extraordinary of ways. His only Son lived amongst us. But notice in particular, God's love, it wasn't an email sent from heaven, or it's not a packet of, of goodwill that He posted in the mail for us. No, God Himself came, and He entered all of the pain and in the sinfulness of this world in order to save us. So, so far from this single verse in the Bible, we've already seen God is not standing off at, at a distance. He's not looking every, at everything far off, you know, with this sense of remote indifference. No. 
I'm sure we've all been watching the news uh, every day uh, and almost every day you know, the, the news is filled with stories about the coronavirus. It's this one story of, of a terrible tragedy after another, after another. And I'm sure as you're watching the news each day, you're feeling something of the, of the horror and, and the sadness. And these different ex- uh, feelings that are sort of welling up inside us. Now, in most cases, though, we can't do anything about it. But we look on from a distance with some sympathy and empathy. But John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus came into the world and into the world that he loves and into a world that does not love him. God is personal. We see also, thirdly, God's power. His power. God's love has accomplished something wonderful. His is a powerful love. So what did God accomplish by sending His Son? Yes, God is powerful, but not only because He made the the universe, He's powerful not only to judge wrongdoing, but He is powerful to save. God's love for us in the Lord Jesus has accomplished this great news. We read, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have eternal life. And that word, uh, to give, he gave, it summarizes Jesus' life on earth, but climaxes in his death on the cross, and then in his resurrection from the dead. In 2018, a man entered a supermarket in the French town of Trebes. Uh, He took hostages, he killed three people and wounded a dozen more. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Arnold uh, Bertram, a 45-year-old police officer, arrived at the scene and he began to negotiate with the terrorist and then he swapped places with uh, one of the female hostages and her life was saved. He was shot in the neck and killed while saving her. And at the time, people began to quote those words of Jesus. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This French policeman laid down his life to save, not a friend, but a stranger. That's love, isn't it? But friends, Jesus laid down his life for us, Not when we were his friends, but while the Bible says we were his enemies. You see, when John here talks about the the world, it's not a descriptor for everything that's nice and friendly and accepting. The concept in John's gospel of of world refers to open-armed rebellion against the Creator. We are protesting and ignoring and breaking God's rules in every possible way. God loved us, we who do not love him. That's the reality. And we're specifically told here that Jesus died to save us from perishing. That word perishing not only means physical death, but also spiritual death. It is to stand condemned before a righteous God. God is not amused at how we live. God's not ignorant of how we're living our lives. You know, in addition to the, the duties that our police are already performing, they're now doing all these spot checks, uh, checking out people and making sure people are doing the right thing and not breaking all the rules of social distancing. They're also visiting uh, hundreds of homes where people uh, are meant to be uh, living in quarantine for a couple of weeks, either because they've tested positive to COVID-19 or because they've returned from overseas and need to, need to be isolating for two weeks. You know, and like surprise, surprise, not everyone's doing the right thing. Dozens of people every day are being caught breaking the law. They're not at home when they're meant to be isolating or people are gathering in large groups when we're not allowed to be doing that anymore. And of course, as we hear some of these reports, we're getting a little miffed off, aren't we? And kind of bewildered at at the selfishness of people. By flouting these rules, you may well be risking someone's life. 
God made the world with, with purpose and design. It, it is beautiful and, and an astonishing world. The world we live in is an astonishing place. And yet we all live and assuming that, well, I'm in a better position to know what is right and I justify why God doesn't know best. Jesus is explaining here there is a consequence and there needs to be. But as he also explains, he came for that very purpose that we might be forgiven and instead of perishing, have eternal life. Listen to the verdict that Jesus gives. I'm going to read from verse 18 of John chapter 3. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Many uh, religions teach, aim high and you'll be rewarded. Jesus teaches, well, we're not aiming high. We're not aiming to love God. But God has loved us so much that he came down. And the Lord Jesus laid down his life for us. Now, while I don't deserve this wonderful gift, it is ours through faith, through Trusting, or the word he uh, is believe, which can be translated as faith or trust, uh, but believe. He says, Whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes, now that word has two sort of separate parts but belong together. Firstly, it means the word believe means this is true. I believe this is true. Jesus is God's Son. He died on the cross for my sins. So I'm accepting this as a fact. But secondly, to believe means to trust. I am giving my life to this Jesus. I'm accepting his sacrifice. In the midst of the, the coronavirus pandemic, our governments have been scrambling to keep the economy afloat as businesses are closing and people are losing their jobs. Last week, they launched a, a $100 billion package to pay businesses in order that they could keep paying their employees to minimise unemployment and, and to stop, if possible, economic catastrophe. And hundreds of thousands of businesses have been applying for this money. And of course, one day, though, as a nation, we're going to have to pay back this debt, this ever-growing debt of hundreds of billions of dollars. Friends, God has paid our debt for sin in full because of his love and Jesus says we receive this gift simply through accepting it through believing him to, to by saying yes to Jesus many Aussies are going to see Good Friday as a holiday uh, this year, it's certainly a strange holiday, but nonetheless, it amounts to a, a long weekend. But it is saying so much more. Many other Australians are going to treat Easter as a religious weekend. This is time to pay homage to the God whom we otherwise are going to ignore. But so much more. Good Friday is about the death of God's only Son on the cross for us. And to this very day and until the end of the world, the cross proves that God is not abstract. He is personal. God is not distant. No, the Lord Jesus entered this world and he died on a Roman cross. He was present. And God is powerful in his love. God loves us in so many ways, seen and unseen, that are ways that are tangible to our senses and not. We depend upon his love for everything. But the Bible focuses on the greatest display of God's love, the cross that has the power to forgive sin, to heal the broken heart, to reconcile relationships even with God. 
The world needs such love. Will you embrace this love of God? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. May we be people who believe and trust in God who loves us and sent his Son for us. I'm going to pray for us. Uh, a number of things, so please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a personal God, that you're a present God who sent your Son to earth to show yourself to us and reveal yourself to us. And we thank you that you are a powerful God, powerful in your love, Father, we thank you that Jesus came and died for us and took our place so that we don't have to perish but can have eternal life. And Father, we pray that we would be people who believe in in you, who trust in you, and who continue to trust and persevere all the days of our life. Father, we pray that this good news would go forth and that more people would, would know who you are, know you as a person who loves and loves us, whom we can know and love. Father, we pray that that good news would go forth and more people would come to trust in you and experience the wonder and the blessing of eternal life. Father, we thank you for this good news on this Good Friday. Father, we also turn again to the the virus situation around the world. Father, we thank you for the progress that we've made here in Australia to flatten the curve. We thank you for the low mortality rate we have here. And we thank you for the dedication of the leaders of this nation, for the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff that that are working at the coalface in dangerous situations. And we thank you that you're sustaining them, sustaining many people at this time. Father, we pray again that a vaccine to this virus will be found quickly. We pray for ourselves in our current climate that you'd give us patience and that we would love others just as you have loved us. Father, we pray that people would come to know you, that they would know and come to realise their powerlessness, their limitedness, their dependence upon you and that you are the gracious, loving creator. And finally, Father, we pray for our our mission partner, Jason Tucker, as he serves with Youth Dimension. And we pray for that organisation as they adjust to to a new leader uh, and uh, serving in a new location. And we pray that you would Give that organisation great creativity, and Jason particularly, great wisdom as he produces videos that will stir the younger generation and point them to Jesus. Father, we pray that you would open doors and enable opportunities for ministry in schools amongst young people and teenagers around this country so that more people would put their trust in you. Father, please be with Jason as he follows you as your disciple, grow his depth of understanding and his trust in you. We pray for him as a husband and as a father. Grow him and sustain him, work in and through him for your glory. And we pray all these things in Jesus' marvellous name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. On this great, on this good day, this Good Friday. Please go and eat too much chocolate, enjoy the long weekend, and tell everyone how much God loves this world. Till next time, God bless you.